Hey guys, it's Sienna Mae Gomez, and I'm gonna be telling you what goes on behind my most viral TikToks. This situation is absolutely insane with accusations flying from both sides. I wanted to share what I went through. All I can say is that I was in love with him. These are the facts, and I'm a witness. And why is all of your evidence posted and quickly deleted? His friends are painting him as the victim, and he is the victim, but not of me. Ooh, a bombshell. Damn, the editing here is super intense. I feel like I'm about to watch an episode of Euphoria. Hi I'm young, and obviously I will not always get it right the first time. Who doesn't love a good YouTube apology? I love YouTube apologies. I'm so sorry for anyone that's been hurt. The continuous lapse in my judgment. It's hard to overlook the irony of David Dobrik turning off comments Brian, on a video titled Let's Talk. While some apologies may lead to an accidental admission He's of guilt, disclosing. others don't even contain the word sorry at all. Some are scripted, while others are very much not. You're f high. <laughs> You're f snorting a line of off a bad my you know what I mean? If I actually like never, me, I never saw his apology video. I didn't know he had one. Online, you get used to a pretty wide range of public statements varying from sincere and tactful to, oh my God, what are the words coming out of your mouth right now? Actually, it just reminded me. Uh, Jenna Marbles, hey guys, she made an apology video and then quit YouTube or said she was. Did she actually do that? It's been like two years now. I guess so. Damn, she said, all right, I'm out then. Issues new apology to staff as producers are fired. Oh, she also just uh, quit her show, right? So that's pretty awesome, I guess. I stay grateful About and I try to stay humble, and I think that I pay attention to what is important and Kelly. what is real. In recent months, her character has been called into question. Yeah, yeah, yeah none of us right? like Ellen. I get it. Uh, Where's her apology? Ninja made you, Ellen. Don't forget it. I got to keep moving and learning and growing. You know, some people don't teach you about how to live this lifestyle or how to be here in this position, but <laughs> I'm learning and I'm growing. It doesn't exactly take a PhD hey, in psychological that's studies all that matters. to gauge who's actually Way sorry to be strong. and who's only sorry they got caught. Who's a literal back. probably won't have the best of luck defending themselves holding a tangible, actual script in front of them. To be fair, it's less of a script than more of like a summer reading essay. Not even the worst interpretive dance I've ever seen. As a response to yes. one of the biggest TikTok controversies in recent years. This is history. how you do apologies. Join me in the timeline of disastrous PR choices of one of TikTok's once most promising entertainers. In just under eight months, Sienna built one of God, the largest background music on, signed with a Hollywood talent agency, secured brand deals with a myriad of major companies, and was even set to star in a Netflix focused on her friend group until a flood yeah, and you of wonder why Netflix is doing Huh. Fellow TikToks. It was just going so fast. From the span of August to maybe October, December, I was gaining a million followers God every damn. week to two weeks. Landing a place alongside Charlie Demir. After getting along so well and becoming more close, the two began appearing side by side more frequently on TikTok. And as you can imagine, it didn't take long for young fans of the two to speculate on the true nature of their relationship. Three things all about Josh. His smile, his optimism. How oh, sweet. Our first kiss? Yeah. We haven't had it yet. We haven't had it yet. No. You haven't had a first kiss yet? No. no. What weird questions to ask. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. Not unlike YouTube and Twitch, oh my God. TikTok. How is the paparazzi like a real profession that still exists in the current century? Jesus Christ. That is so weird. So genuinely weird. And it's so outdated now, too, considering, like, all of these social media people and celebrities posted, like, all of their themselves. Like, their most moments are moments that they are capturing and posting themselves. So the paparazzi are getting paid for actual nothingness. Just to take pictures of them holding coffee cups. Are you guys dating? 
They would very openly Ugh. show PDA, but never outright clarified Jesus whether Christ. they were dating. So with this PR so win, I have to see, and I must have felt a new air of confidence. After all, it was around this time that Netflix was filming for a hype house. Yeah. The chaos surrounding the That's biggest it. Hold on, I'm stars. curious. How many TikToker shows does Netflix have? Let me see. I'm curious. Let's see. They have to have like five or six, right? So the hype house. They have the hype house competition show on Netflix. Or I guess it's not the hype house uh, per se, but like it. How, okay, can someone just tell me? I don't even know what I'd search for. <clears throat> There's only like two? No, that can't be right. They had the Addison Ray one, they had the Hype House one, they had that competition one where a bunch of TikTokers got into a house to fight for like, like Big Brother style. They had, um, oh, they had another on somebody and I'm blanking on their name. I think they've been doing like a big investment in TikToker focused media for the built-in the D'Amelio family's on Hulu. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe it's all over the place. On the 31st, Mason Rizzo, a friend of Jackson's kindergarten, published the following statement to Twitter, reading, I struggle with seeing a girl praised after telling my best it's friend to Roman. kill himself and him numerous times after he set boundaries and then repeatedly wonder why he doesn't like you back. She oh, also man. has a history of verbally abusing people. She's young. Come on. Life. She prioritizes the Give growth her of her platform rather than the positive message she represents herself as. Whatever evidence you think you have, either post it or send it to me and I'll post it because you have nothing. <laughs> that's so bold. <laughs> that's that's from the so bold. <laughs> On June 3rd of 2021, this short video taken in November was posted by another friend of Jack's, seemingly depicting Sienna straddling an unconscious Jack Wright, groping him and kissing him on the lips while looking out. The guy next to him who posted the video got up after feeling uncomfortable, but went back to pull Sienna off once he realized what was happening, posting this alongside the clip in an effort to further support the claim that Jack was in fact asleep, or at the very least incapable of consent during that time. Being definitive proof of in the eyes of some, this video remains a heavy point of contention today. Asiana has since made the claim many times over that he was not unconscious and completely consenting as it happened. It does seem like he was. Another statement not long That's after, usually what I look like Jack when I'm consenting. Go on to dispute. The Hawaii incident happened where honestly I'm glad that they have evidence. Thanks, you After Bulldog. Shanna found out about the video, she said sorry. She said if this got out, she would be done. That is horrible, and she's working the on Bill things. Cosby. As a victim of it's true, assault, but not by me. And I am a victim of continual. And if they had an earlier video, there was and pudding. And my name with false claims. It will not work. I'm here to clear things up and provide all sides of the story because I have been labeled as a. Her. Right out of the gate, Sienna's demeanor is potato. stronger and more aggressive than before. She comes off less concerned for her friend, who she just previously said was abused, and more frustrated with how the situation has affected her. Any video you go watch of us. Please, and I encourage you to go watch my recent YouTube videos featuring Jack, God, our recent TikTok. This is so uncomfortable. You will Holy see that this behavior Jesus Christ. was normal. Online, we touched each other, kissed each other, we were playful. Jack kissed me, and I kissed him. Within the boundaries of our relationship, this was normal. Definitely <laughs> not doing much to sway people in her favor, but let's look. I would usually go over when he's unconscious and yank on his winky. So I went back and took. It was part of our friendship. When I got closer, I noticed her right hand inappropriately touching his crush. She was shocked that I. I would play with his when he was having nightmares in order to ease his mind. Next day, about the situation that happened at night. And then I'd spit on his face. That happens all the time. And also, why was he kissing me back? She said he was fully awake and kissing her back, pointing to the way Jack's arm moves when his friend gets up from the couch. Now, maybe Sienna isn't sure how gravity works, but I think it's pretty clear to me, at least, which I have to say, so don't get sued, that his arm only moved because the guy stood up. No, he. It's like weakened at Bernie's. He's fine. He doesn't fly on that. He's fine. Clip. There's not a whole lot to He's go consenting. on. Come on. Is eager Come on. For herself. You claim in your video that you hear He said yes, noises. so she could so finger his butthole. Why did you record it? James, you are Jack's twin brother, and I know that Whoa. if my brother saw me being taken advantage of, he would pick up the person on top of me and beat them. That's a 
Not me. Awful defense. That would be a horrible look. They're trying to be you, not themselves. To me, Jack's twin, James, took this Eggs video for potato. his brother's own good. She then goes on to rapid fire a bunch of points that, again, really don't matter as far as what she's being accused of. This was also in November when we had first just started to kind of ease our way into relationship, not relationship, defined, and you were introducing me as your girl. Having your friend take a 10 second clip out of context of this entire night is not She's confused why all right, this is even closed. an issue Fuck at it. all, since James Run and it. Jack had never brought it up to her privately. This would not age the finest either. In the wake of Jack's formal She's better than Amber Heard's lawyer, though. YouTube that's, channel about that's true. half a year later. Though. Sienna issued cease and desist letters Didn't regardless. Though, good it went on to take a month-long break from social media. The situation down once again, at least before Sienna made her long away yes. critically acclaimed. Yes. She comes back post this absolutely let's go video. an interpretive dance video for an essay it's so good this is how you should apologize a whole social media but now i'm back you know with the mickey mouse clubhouse dance <laughs> hey oh, what is this let's go deaf and stupid do you have to be but through struggle i found clarity within myself god apology videos are always amazing but this one i still think is one of the best I don't have anything to add. This literally the Epic. worst response to any controversy <laughs> I have ever seen. So good. Somehow, Sienna Mae's PR team figured that shooting a, a highly Insta's. stylized interpretive dance to a song which contains the lyrics, I did nothing wrong, I'm young, mm -hmm. would be an appropriate response to SA allegations. God, and it was a fly on a wall during that meeting. It's like getting up in the middle of your trial and doing this dance. I mean, if you go to Google Tone, God, right I wish now, a link to her video pops <laughs> up. For God's sake, she starts off with a close up of her push to start. Even if I can only inspire one person, I will have done what I was put on this earth to do. It's very Sia esque. Before launching into the worst dance moves a human being is capable of. Needless to say, this video convinced didn't, everyone she was- Didn't there. Amber just fire her whole PR team? Maybe there's a chance we see in trial her break out the interpretive dance like as a last ditch Hail Mary. I don't want this to be the last one. It can't- it can't be here. I really think there's a lot of potential with the apology interpretive dances. So, fingers crossed. I, I really think we got a good chance there. The Hawaii didn't happen. Jack can confirm that he was in fact out, unconscious, almost. Oh, I can't night. believe and that. The that looks like a fully conscious man to me. Most vulnerable state. Two friends escorted her out of the party since she had also been causing additional problems that night, but resorted to jumping and rolling out of a moving vehicle to get back. Oh, I forgot Jack, about that. Who was part. hiding from Sienna in the house? According to him, her parents had to. That was like full blown like Two Jason Statham stunts. And I don't know. It was. It was just like normal. For me that I, like I didn't think there was such like a problem at all like part of me wants to blame myself for being nice and sticking around after so many so many times but now I realize that I was stuck in this like manipulative cycle of her acting like she extremely cared about yeah, she's me. like a super that villain she would do stuff to wanting me. And it was, it to was jack. so normal for me I, I got used to it painting a horrific picture of waking up in the middle of how the does night. all this happen before you raise a f red flag though you've clearly not been around a ton of people people you think are a friend you'll ignore a ton of flags for happens all the time even if it's not romantic i am holding in a pp really badly though so i'm gonna go real quick and i'll be right back on February 23rd, 2022, Sienna May returned to the public eye with an appearance on the BFFs podcast hosted by Dave Portnoy, the CEO oh, wow. of Barstool Sports, who you may remember as a proud investor of the infamous crypto coin SafeMoon, which turned out to be a worthless pyramid scheme. But hey, he SafeMooners. He threatened to fire and sue his employees on the spot for wanting to unionize. Or you may know his abundant legal history. Whatever the case <clears> may be, Dave Portnoy, alongside his co-hosts, who are half his age, brought Sienna back on the <laughs> program after having her on just a yeah, year sounds prior. About right. I actually saw Dave Portnoy in real world once when we went to that god awful Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight. Dave Portnoy was there and he was leaving the stadium and one person asked for a picture with him so he turned around and asked if anyone else wanted a picture with him and nobody said anything. That's the only experience I've had with Dave Portnoy. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I like his pizza reviews though. I don't know too much about the guy but that situation was pretty awesome. Shit was great. I want to talk about my emotional state and like I feel like what I want to touch on is like 
how I'm doing and like like the emotional questions that I know you guys are gonna ask. But as for like the legal and like the so what's going on questions, that's for them to answer because like I don't want to. I'm I'm trying to. I don't want butcher anything. This is all like now it's serious, you know, like. What a blunder. Okay, yeah, so just, Why would you go to an interview on like this and bring lawyers? That just makes it look significantly worse. Hey, Charlie, you did bad. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. And I'm bringing an entire legal team, too. Okay. You guys and whoever's going to see this now, that there's nothing being done. Like, I just Why does that, kind of like, what? all right, I'm going to let my team, like, just talk about this one and kind of like... She has the one. worst if PR the team of all time. that told you to do the interpretive dance, Holy. I think you should probably be worried. When the two had never even gotten to the point of dating, he made it clear he did not want to be with her. And she still persisted, according to what's been claimed. I, like, really, really loved him. And I was like, I'm going to get married to this guy. Like, this is the one. Like, I was so stoked on him. He... Man, that is such weird me. behavior. That... It, bro, if this was a guy saying this, it, it would be much differently received. This is like actual incel. They were never even dating or anything at all. Talking about like marriage and sh this is the one. He's a prime. Kizmo, Thebe, and Dermot. Yeah, that is like real stalkerish behavior right there. Sienna likes to emphasize that the two had never had as if this was ever as Jack claimed. And I'm surprised Sienna keeps harping on it, even with her lawyer sitting right next to her. She absolutely cannot, for some reason, answer Dave's question of, well, did you know he, he wasn't, wasn't it? into it? and you're still pursuing it. Instead, all of her answers are keeping the best interests of Sienna in mind. And how- Wait, she does she have two Canada, lawyers all here? Of her answers are- Wait, is this, is this one of the normal hosts on Portnoy's show? This doesn't seem like the company Dave Portnoy would keep. She brought two lawyers? <laughs> hey, can I get Saul Goodman over here and then, I don't know, someone else please? I really need to make an impression are keeping the best interests of Sienna. Oh my god, you're right. Wait, they are all, they, they are in the same room, all of them. And you're still pursuing it? Instead, all of her answers are- Yeah, you're right, it's the same plans. I knew she was here because she reached out and patted her on the shoulder or whatever, in the face, God only knows. But yeah, I didn't realize this guy's in the same place too, unless he has just been like deep faked in here. The National Center for Audio and Video Forensics was retained to perform an analysis on a cell phone video posted to social media. I was asked if the video contains the credible evidence oh of the accusations against Ms. Gomez. In short, no. The posted video is not credible evidence of these accusations. The video is not original. The video has been heavily altered. The video Based on what? no context to the events. Wait, how did you... The video is not credible. Well, I think we need to clarify in these first two statements, this would be huge if you can prove the video has been heavily altered. You're telling me someone actually did CGI this in here? You're gonna need to, like, clarify here. That would blow this whole thing wide open. <laughs> the video doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, point five. The video is not real. In fact, nothing's real. What is solipsism? of the accusations against Ms. Gomez. I feel like that was a bad CSI video. I mean, my instinct is people are going to be like, that's a guilty video. It felt like a bad move. <laughs> Actually very funny. They shred this video in front of the guy who made it. But I have to say it's hard to deny the video is short and doesn't show the events leading up to and after what is taking place. But she repeatedly chose to take advantage of Jack Wright when he was at his most vulnerable, keeping him at arm's length no matter where they went due to her bizarre, ignorant, and selfish infatuation with a boy who clearly didn't reciprocate feelings. I personally believe the latter. After everything Jack has said and personally testified against, it's hard for me to look at this video as anything other than the truth. Even if saying that could get me crucified by Sienna's legal team. However, I don't know man, her legal team doesn't seem that adept. This guy actually put together a uh, CSGO montage to prove why the video is bad without any evidence. He just said four points. It's not original, it's heavily altered. Like, with nothing else there, it's kind of worthless. It doesn't matter how young and inexperienced Sienna was when she goes to such extreme lengths to keep Jack and her critics at bay as to not damage the precious reputation she's built on a mountain of lies and sick dance moves. God, their dance apology is so good. I love it. I wish more people would do that. That was interesting. 
the person who edited that dance was my hero. Oh, you talking about like the banjo kazooie sound effects? Yeah, that was pretty cool. <clears throat> do you think clout prolongs relationship? Oh, do you think clout prolong their relationship? I mean, yeah, it was like a, it was a business. They're both profiting off pretending to be together or whatever. <clears throat> of course. Okay, let's see the Liver King response. This is, again, a follow-up to the big expose from More Plates, More Dates that revealed in, a, in an email that Liver King isn't natty. He was communicating with a coach to get advice on his stack, referring to, like, the HGH and everything he was cycling. It... It be, which is a big deal because Liver King has always defended that he's 100% natural. All you need to do to look like him is follow the nine ancestral tenets. And he has a ton of companies, claims to make $100 million a year. But it's all based on being able to look like him through natural stuff, which isn't the case. So this is him coming out about it. If I had to spitball a guess, I would imagine Liver King takes this directly. I don't think he's going to try and like claim it's all deep faked. He's not going to claim it's reptilians behind the scenes of the puppet master that faked the emails. He strikes me as someone who's going to try and take it head on and just hope that the majority of us doesn't care. That's my guess. Finally, I'm making this video to apologize. Because I don't. This is it kind of quiet? I'm ashamed. I've stated that this is a complicated topic, at least to me it is, because before social media... I was rich and anonymous, and after social media, I'm still rich, but no longer anonymous, and I never expected this kind of exposure. That was very frank. Public eye. That's what I mentioned briefly in the in the video. Way before he was the Liver King, he was still super rich. Like he was still very rich. Clearly, I did it wrong, and I'm here now to set the record straight. Yes, I've done. Some YouTuber sigh. Yes. I am on steroids, monitored and managed by a trained hormone clinician. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message, to bring to the 4,000 people a day who kill themselves. The 80,000 people a day that try to kill themselves are people are hurting at record rates with depression, autoimmune, anxiety, infertility, low ambition in life. This is all very sweet and everything, but you you deliver a message and then sell products based around the message, of which you just admitted a large portion of it, your physique, is a lie. Now, if you were just like a motivational speaker or just like a, like a normal YouTuber or Instagram guy who delivers positive messages, that's one thing. You being on steroids and everything, like that's not that big of a deal. But the fact that you constantly defended being natty and sell all these programs based around it and then aren't actually the result of those things you talk about is pretty misleading, which he does admit, but spinning it as like this positive thing where I'm only here to try and help all these people who are struggling isn't super genuine when you're making so much money off them. Like you could still just be delivering that message for free. They don't need to like pay for it if your main goal is to just deliver a positive message. I appreciate like the very upfront honesty, like, yep, I am on steroids. He didn't, he didn't try and tiptoe around it. He just came in there and spread the cheeks wide open and letting us see the filthy truth on it. That's admirable. But this immediate spin about how it's all for the people that are struggling and wanting to kill themselves, that I don't put much stock into when you're making so much money off of these programs. Like, that's clearly not the main goal when you're very much taking as much money for it as you can. Hey, Charles here with a little post-game aftermath reflection. After watching the video, I get the impression this is more of an I'm sorry I got caught situation as opposed to an I'm sorry I did it. I'm still not 100% sure, but after watching it, that's more of the vibe I got. I wanted to put this at the beginning of the video just to get this out there before continuing with the apology video. And I want to also let it be known that this isn't some shocking revelation. No one heard that Liver King was on the juice and was like frantically googling for the evidence because they couldn't believe it. Like pretty much anyone with eyes and anyone that knows anything about fitness realized that his body wasn't naturally achievable. Like Jesus Christ, just look at his abs. They look like Lego blocks. That looks like it's made out of titanium. You could hit it with a sledgehammer and it'd probably just break the sledgehammer. Most people could tell 
that he had more juice in his body than a Snapple factory. It, it wasn't a naturally achievable body type, but he always defended tooth and nail that he was natty 100% and he'd never touched HGH, steroids, anything of that caliber. But that's just a blatant lie. And when his whole product is being sold based on this physique that he's lying about, it seems exceptionally to me. Just lying to his and getting them to buy into things under a false notion. And when asked if I've ever taken steroids, I've always said no. I don't touch the stuff. Not gonna touch the stuff. Never touch the stuff. Mm hmm. That was a lie. Yeah. I've convinced myself that this had nothing to do with the ancestral message. I convinced myself that I'm not a competitive athlete of any kind. So who the fuck am I cheating? I You're cheating your. I, I'm still early, so maybe he comes to that realization since he prefaces it by saying, I convinced myself, past tense. But like, yeah, you're not competing. You, like, it, you're not going to jail for taking steroids, but you're cheating the people that believed in you and believed in the message about looking like you, or at least incomparable. You, you are cheating them. So I continually dismissed it, and I dug myself into a bigger and deeper hole. True. I have only myself to blame. I did that. That is true. And it was all wrong. I will be better. Very I will upfront. talk about it openly because I believe that there's a time and a place for pharmacological intervention monitored and managed by a trained hormone physician. Nope. The liver See, came like, had his message, had he come out get from the very, the genesis of Liver King, from the primordial ooze of liver and a king, if he had come out and been like, look at this physique. This is not a naturally achievable physique. I am on steroids. And then started preaching his message. I don't think he would have ever had a problem. He probably still would have found a very similar level. The spiritual pressure of the liver king was too much for my internet to handle. It took out the entire power grid. So stream cut out there for a moment. So I'll finish my statement here. What I was saying is he would have still found a high level of success if he was just upfront and honest about his PED usage. Because he still has an absurd physique. He has a body that looks like three Gears of War characters did a fusion dance. So people would have still went to his content for like workout advice and like general life advice. And he has preached some positive stuff as well as some genuinely wacky stuff that people eat up. They love it. So he would have still found it while being open about using these HGH steroids and stuff like that. And he wouldn't have had to lie to them and mislead them about what the human body is capable of achieving naturally. But if you're going to say, I'm natural when you're not, and then sell programs under the belief that they too can look like you, that to me just screams like scam. Like knowingly just misleading them. Yeah, I feel like Liver King's just living in the past where everyone was demonized for using PEDs. I feel like in the modern landscape of the fitness industry, like fitness influencers, most of them are super open with PED usage. I think most people know the majority of fitness influencers are on some level of juice and they're okay with that. Why did I, or why do I do them? Well, it's not a when hard question. When I talk question. about the 85% of the population that suffers from self-esteem issues, that's me. I'm part of that statistic. This is why I work myself to in the gym. This is why I do 12 to 15 blood burning workouts a week just to feel like I'm okay that have shed light on this complicated as fuck topic. I knew I needed to take this opportunity. I just don't think it's complicated. That's He's probably being very honest about self-esteem issues. That's very common when it comes to bodybuilding. But it's also not hard to understand why you would take them in his position. He needs to stand out in the fitness industry. Well, how do you stand out in the fitness industry? You need to carve out a niche. Well, with so many fitness influencers out there, it's a saturated market. What niche? How about Primal? Like, very old school. Paleo was huge, so why not even harder in that realm? And I'm going to really need to look super special to stand out. So you turn to enhancements like HGH and everything. It's a pretty, like, easily understandable reasoning for taking it. Of course, self-esteem probably does play into it because body dysmorphia is so common with fitness. But I think probably the main driver, especially with the emails, makes it sound like it was a manufactured idea from the get-go. I need to get super jacked. I need to be super standout-ish. So I need these pretty impressive stack to do that for my business. Seems more like a business decision. But I, of course, I do imagine he's being honest that there is a self-esteem element to that. But it absolutely 
undeniably was the main reason his brand was so popular. I am as sorry as a man can be. And all I can do is take extreme ownership right now, be better, and lead myself to a better life as a better human. Again, thank you to everyone for the support, the criticism, the love, the hate, and above all else, the loyalty. Never King. I do think he's minimizing the magnitude of misleading people when you run a business like this because you're selling them a false idea and you continue to lie about it. I think that's a much bigger issue than he's letting on or maybe he doesn't realize how that is. But overall, it seemed like he accepted responsibility for all of his lying, which is a good start. He didn't try and put that blame elsewhere. He didn't really try and deflect it. He, he downplayed that quite a bit, but... It wasn't, a, it wasn't a horrible apology by any means. What's up everybody, it's Critical. I know everyone hates YouTube drama, but I'm not one of them. In fact, this has become one of my biggest guilty pleasures, just watching YouTube drama unfold from afar. It, this is my soap opera. This is my as the world turns, as the YouTube burns, is, that's what this is. And it's great, it's just this big hubbub over very mundane things on the website, and it's become so popular recently, and I can't help but kind of tune in, because it's very fascinating. And one thing I always look forward to in these situations is the inevitable apology video from one of the two sides because they're usually just absolutely atrocious and very fun to watch. Now I'm sure anyone watching this is familiar with the CSGO Lotto drama. To sum it up, two big YouTubers, Syndicate and T. Martin, own this gambling website for Counter-Strike skins and they never disclosed that they owned it and manipulated their viewers into using it and all this. And today T. Martin made an apology video for it and it is turbo. So I wanted to just kind of talk about it. So the video starts with T. Martin talking to his special guest Airbud, and they're running a promotional for Airbud's new movie, Airbud Gambles on CS Go Skins, and he's saying how difficult it's going to be for him to make this video. So right away, T. Sharton has made me very uncomfortable and squirming in my chair like my rectum's been tickled by a porcupine because it's the most cringeworthy attempt at using one of the most popular techniques for public service announcements and emotional campaigns, where you get a cute animal there to get the viewer's guard down, make them feel like you're being real with them, make, it, make them feel like they're being genuine, and just kind of elicit sympathy from the viewer. And T. Martin's trying to utilize this technique, but he does it atrociously. It's just an absolutely abysmal attempt, and it comes across as so fake and so forced and just sets a horrible tone for the rest of the apology video. Now, I'm not going to play too much of the video because there's nothing to really be gained by listening to this human Ken doll repeat himself. The gist of the apology is, he is sorry that you were too stupid to understand that he was the owner of CSGO Lotto, and he is sorry for not spelling it out for your dumb every single day in every single video reminding you that he owned it. You, it's your fault, this controversy is nothing that he's done wrong, it is just your fault as a viewer for not knowing that he owns CSGO Lotto, and he makes it very clear that he has done nothing illegal whatsoever. That's basically all this apology video is, is shifting the blame for this whole controversy on his it's the fault for not understanding or knowing that he was the owner of the website. That's basically this whole thing. So this no-nippled Neanderthal doesn't address any of the actual complaints or issues people had about this situation. He doesn't talk about why he blatantly lied about owning CSGO Lotto. He doesn't talk about why he changed the descriptions of all of his videos to add a disclaimer in the uh, description. And he also doesn't talk about why he pretended to find CSGO Lotto instead of saying he made it or owned it. I'm not going to get too deep into talking about the actual drama because there's nothing I can offer that hasn't already been talked about or discussed. But basically he just pretended like he found CSGO Lotto when he brought it up as if it was some type of random chance. Oh, you know, I was on Google looking for new $2 million villas to buy that I could use as public arenas where I can invite homeless people in to just all the rooms in the house if they'd like. You know, because I'm a good guy, you know. But I, while I was looking for this, I happened to come across a diamond in the rough. It's called CSGO Lotto. I'll put the link in the description in case you guys want to check it out. It's kind of cool. It looks really nice. I hear the owner has a... It's just... A, it's a cool site, you know. I, 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 I think it's good. I'm not in any way. That's basically what he did. He pretended he didn't know what it was, and he doesn't talk about any of these issues in his apology video. This man doesn't take responsibility for... What he needed to do was grit his tiny tic-tac teeth and just say, look, I, up, I did this, I did that, I shouldn't have done any of those things, and he would have got a lot more respect out of people, and they wouldn't have seen him as this that I think the majority of people see him as now, uh, after this apology video. Because all of this comes across as so fake, and just reading the comments and just looking at how people are reacting, they all see right through it. 
He is just sorry he got caught. That is all. He doesn't give a f about the situation or is in general. He just wants people to keep watching him no matter what so he can continue to live in his expensive two-story mansion with his nice truck in the background and that peculiar modern art painting in the background that looks like solid snake inside of a Mr. Meeseeks uterus. I'm not quite sure what the f*** going on with that, but I'm sure it's about $50,000. Now, I'm sure he knows that it doesn't really matter how he handled this situation. He's going to be fine in two months, no matter what. In fact, he'll probably be better off in two months than he is right now, because everyone has heard his name so much recently, they're going to check him out out of curiosity. So he's not going to really lose many viewers, and he'll actually probably gain more. He, he knows that he could have handled this situation any way he wanted. He could have shown his on this apology video, and still everything would be fine. His lifestyle wouldn't be affected. His profession, none of that would be affected, and he knows that, so he doesn't really give too much of a... And another thing that really upset me about this video is the way he ended it. He ended it with him grabbing the camera like he was about to give me a Ghost Rider pin and stare. Come on, bro, you gotta do better than that. Edit that out. Have you never edited your own video? Do you just have beaver their tail on their key on your keyboard and edit your... Come on, fart, do better than that. Now, I know everyone talks about, oh, how do you a YouTube channel? There's just no way. They're too big to fall. That's a YouTube, can a YouTube channel can just like any other website or any other company, anything like that. All it takes is for people to stop watching them. If you really feel enough that you really don't want this guy to be able to continue to manipulate people and do types of shady, stop watching him. It's that easy. Don't go on his channel to dislike and insult the guy. It doesn't fucking matter. It just really makes no difference. If you want a YouTube channel to disappear, you stop watching it. That's how it works. That's how it works with a lot of it in the world. If you just give it attention, it's going to persist. There's no such thing as bad publicity. That's a saying for a reason, because as long as it's being talked about, it's going to continue to exist, no matter people's opinions on it. The only way things really do fade into obscurity is you stop uh, supporting them or even or just acknowledging them. That's a better word for it. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk about this situation because this is one of the worst apology videos I've seen out of a YouTube drama situation, so I thought it'd be fun to talk about. So, yeah, that's it. And I do read a lot of your comments. In fact, one of my favorite comments I've ever read is someone said, My voice sounds like the world's most unenthusiastic hand job. And that one gave me a real hoot. But the reason I'm saying this is I read your comments and I know a lot of you don't like when I talk about drama or get involved in YouTube drama in any capacity. And I know, I understand, and I don't do it often, but sometimes certain situations affect me and make me want to talk about it or point out how horribly the situation was handled. But that's it. It's not going to be like... I do all of the time or anything like that, so don't worry about that. And yeah, that's it. So yeah. Today, Will Smith posted a YouTube apology video from Chris Rock at the Oscars. And when I saw it, I had to scratch my head and wonder why. It happened so long ago. I was confused. Why is he apologizing now? I felt like Robin Williams coming out of Jumanji asking what year it was. And then I remembered that that happened this year. It was four months ago that Will Smith, Chris Rock's head clean off his shoulders at the Oscars. He turned a ceremony into a public when he blasted Chris Rock to Valhalla, just banishing him to the shadow realm with a- mm -hmm. <sighs> Oh baby, that's right. He starts this with the most generic YouTuber apology intro imaginable. A slow walk into a big sigh right before getting into the actual apology. Textbook. He's clearly been trained by some of the YouTuber apology greats like Logan Paul, Laura Lee, Tati. I mean, this is perfection here. Every box of YouTuber apology cliche gets ticked immediately except for one. He didn't bring his dog into it. A lot of YouTubers like to bring in an animal in order to, you know deflects some of the criticism with cuteness with the animal. Will Smith, unfortunately, must have forgot that prop this time around, but everything else he nails. Why didn't you apologize to Chris in your acceptance speech? Um, I was fogged out by that point. It's, 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 it's all fuzzy. So the main thing he's doing in the apology video here is answering questions that people have asked over the last four months. And again, I have to wonder why even bother. It's been four months on internet time. That's basically ancient history. Like that's back there with like Y2K now. Most people have moved on and forgotten about it. So it's a little weird to be this tardy to the party with addressing these things. Now, of course, I understand this was like a career ruining moment for him. So he wants to do his best to be perceived positively again, both by 
movie execs as well as the general public. So if he really did feel strongly enough that he wants to apologize, then all power to him. But anyway, the first question that he addresses here is one that I don't think anyone with half a brain ever asked in the first place. Why didn't you apologize to Chris during your acceptance speech? The answer should be pretty obvious if you have eyes. It's because he was still mad. He was still fuming. Of course he wasn't going to apologize for it. Literally 15 before he accepted that, he had just charged the stage like The Undertaker during WrestleMania going into the ring and clobbered Chris. So of course he's not going to immediately like fold and be like, man, sorry Chris, that was out of, out of, that was out of line. He was still upset. That's why he didn't apologize. I don't really understand his excuse of I was still, you know, in a fog. It was all still fuzzy. Like in the moment that makes sense, but over the last four months, what, you've just been in a perpetual fog? You've been in like the upside down? Or like, what do you mean? You've had four months if you wanted to publicly apologize to Chris and you didn't. And even to be fair here, you still don't. He says I'm sorry to a lot of people, but the one person he doesn't say the words I'm sorry to is Chris. I've reached out to Chris um, and the, mes the message that came back is that uh, he's not ready to talk. And when he is, he will reach out. Um, so I will, I will say to you, uh, Chris, I apologize to you. Uh, my behavior was unacceptable and I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. That almost sounds like a trap, like, hey, I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. And it turns out Will's been training for the last four months with boxing, so he's been like brick walls until they collapse, so he's ready to really get him with like a double whammy, get him with that encore performance. There's a big difference between saying, I apologize to you, and I'm sorry. I don't think people really understand the value of just saying, I'm sorry. I think it's the most important thing to say during an apology, which he does say later on to other people, but never Chris. To Chris, he just says, I apologize, and the action was unacceptable. Which is, you know, that's good, that's definitely a start, but I really think you needed that cherry on top here of an I'm sorry. This is also just one of those things that should have been handled privately. I'm sure there were plenty of ways in the pipeline to let Chris know that you were genuinely remorseful for what happened, but I understand why he thought this was a good idea. I'm gonna make a video coming publicly uh, apologizing and owning up to my mistakes, letting people see how horrible I feel and what I'm doing to change and be better. The thought process makes sense. You know, let people see a vulnerable side of you and let them know that you made a mistake and you know that. And that, it, it, it again, does make sense to anyone who's never been on the internet. I think one thing most people online are starting to understand and wake up to is that when you make an apology video, you lose. It's like what games taught us. The only winning move is not to play. When you make an apology video, it is a lose-lose situation for you. You're either going to have people that don't believe that you're actually sorry, or they're going to have people that think that you didn't need to apologize in the first place, so now you look stupid. You look like a... Which I'm already seeing with Will Smith's apology, like, why is he apologizing? He stood up for his wife. Does he not support his wife anymore? Oh my god, I've lost all respect for Will with this apology now. And then on the other side of that coin is, man, Will really needed to apologize, but this apology video was so dogged, he missed the mark entirely. This is the worst apology video I've ever seen in my life. You just don't win with an apology. So again, this should have just been private. Three months um, replaying and understanding the nuances and, and the complexities of what happened in, in that moment. You think out of a man, it's not that deep. Talking about it like it's the most complex situation of all time, like this was somehow, you know, like the like a cold here. here. It, it was a simple act that affected a decent chunk of people. Chris, most notably, I would say, was physically affected by this lap, but Will's career was also hurt by it. Chris's family was probably pretty upset by it. Like, yes, of course, people were affected by it, but it's not like it. there needs to be like four months spent of just digesting this giant web that all spawned from us. Because again, at the end of the day, it's really not that deep. After Jada rolled her eyes, did she tell you to do? No. Um, it's like, you know, I'm, I made a choice on my own, from my own experiences, from my history with Chris. Jada had nothing to do with it. 
Jada was behind the camera with a teleprompter and making sure this question was addressed properly. Of course, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, Jada just has very uh, odd moments publicly with Will that I think are very tasteless in the things she says to and about Will. And it's the reason why a lot of people felt like she may have contributed to this overreaction from Will. You know, her rolling her eyes and then just having all of that context with the things she has said publicly about and to Will just made people uh, wonder whether or not she was somehow involved in that decision from Will. But he's clearing the air here saying that it was just him doing it. And you know what? I'll take his word for it. I think this was just an impulsive decision here. Uh, I, I don't think Jada had some kind of device that she can control Will's brain like out of Dexter's lab. I, I really think he just completely overreacted and went berserk here for some reason. And I don't think Jada is necessarily guilty of that, but I do think she is guilty of being a very toxic partner. I know that sounds parasocial to say, but the amount of clips and videos of Jada just on Will to his face is baffling. Like the time where she was just talking about cheating right to him and how much she like enjoyed it or whatever during their red table talk. Oh my god, it's so hard to sit through. As Will's like in tears about it and she's just joking. Oh man, it's brutal. And so now Will looks like a I mean, I'm just not a big Jada fan, I'll say it. I don't think she's that nice. What would you say to the people who looked up to you before the... or people who expressed that you let them down? Um... Let me just stop you right there. You don't have to apologize to me. I found this whole thing to be highly entertaining. I thought this was extremely goofy, and no one seriously got injured or anything like that. This was just an absolute wild moment. And honestly, for this section, he should have just said, you're welcome, you know, to the, the journalist that wouldn't stop writing about it, like a million articles all going deep into it for no reason, talking about how this is setting a bad precedent and how in the next Oscars, all of a sudden people might be showing up there with battle axes to attack their critics, how journalists are no longer safe, you know, this and that. Like, he honestly should have just said, you're welcome for the two weeks of just articles and videos about it. Now, of course, there were super fans of Will that were disappointed to see this, and I think it's cute that he said that he was sorry for it and letting them down. He apologized to Chris, Chris's family, his family for the negative backlash they faced. He apologized to pretty much everyone that was directly impacted by it. And now in this section, he's talking about how horrible he feels when he doesn't live up to people's image of him. And I will say, he does seem pretty sincere for the most part. But again, it's been four months. Most people have moved on. This was pretty unnecessary. Though I'm sure a lot of people that did feel, like, really disappointed appreciate the gesture. Disappointing people is my central trauma. Um, I hate when I let people down. Uh, it hurts me psychologically and emotionally to know I didn't live up to uh, people's image and impression of me. Deeply remorseful. And I'm trying to be remorseful without being ashamed of myself, right? I'm human. And I made a mistake. But yeah, he finishes it off by saying that he is remorseful and he's, you know, working on being better. And if you stick with him, you can all be friends again. And that's basically where it concludes. Overall, I don't think it's like the worst apology ever, especially in the tier list of YouTuber apologies. I think this one was one of the more sincere ones, at least from everything I've seen from it. Unless I've been deceived by his great acting, I couldn't tell you. But I, this is just one of those situations that is so wild to me. Why do this four months later? If he had done this like a day, two days, even a week after this happened, I think the reception to it would have been much better than it currently is. Yes, it still has, I think, a pretty positive reception overall from, like, his actual, like, dedicated fans. But the general consensus I'm seeing here is, why is he doing this? This seems very fake to do it now. It's way too late. We've all moved on. This and that. So, again, you don't really win with an apology video, but if he'd at least... Some very interesting news came to light that involves a very popular fitness influencer whom I'm sure you've all seen at some point, The Liver King. He's most known for his videos eating raw meat, raw organs, raw testicles even, which goes so hard. And he preaches the ancestral primal way of living 
and says that you can achieve his ungodly physique and his body does look like straight out of Dragon Ball Z or Baki the Grappler. He says you can achieve that 100% naturally by following his nine tenets. And he is also a very successful businessman. He has tons of companies under his belt that he claims makes him over $100 million a year. And just a couple days ago, much like my after eating spicy food, a big leak happened. Emails between the Liver King and a coach that he was turning to for some advice have now hit the public eye. And these emails indicate some uh, juice usage here, and some pretty expensive juicing at that. Which completely goes against everything he preaches because he vehemently defends his body being natural. He has said millions of times now across tons of podcasts, his own content, saying he has never touched this stuff and never would. He is 100% natural. But now we have a lot of evidence to suggest that that's completely false and just a blatant lie. Now, this is probably the least shocking news you've ever heard because anyone with eyes should be able to look at the Liver King's body and immediately deduce that this is not a naturally achievable physique in any universe. And especially not for someone of his age, mid-40s, he'd have to have had genetics gifted straight from Mount Olympus. And most fitness professionals have called him out over the years saying that he's juiced to the gills, and I mean, just look at him. Like, I could swim in his veins. They're so huge. Like, this man has more sauce in his body than a Chick-fil-A. Even when he's sitting down, just look at his abs. His six-pack is more defined than 4K television, and they have more depth than a Game of Thrones season. It's beyond me how anyone ever believed that his body was naturally achieved. It's been very clear and has been called out many times that he is absolutely on the gear. But a lot of people just wanted to believe in the teachings and hope that they could get similar. But realistically, the only way you get a body similar to the Liver King's is if you somehow get chosen for the Captain America Super Serum or start cycling some very heavy-duty stuff here. Now, what you're looking at here is everything that Liver King said he'd been taking. This is part of the emails with the coach. And if you want a more in-depth breakdown of what all of this is, more Plates, More Dates, which is the channel that broke all of this, goes into very good detail about what all of this is. So you can see there is a lot that he's taking here. And from what I've read, this comes around to about $15,000 a month worth of these enhancements, these unnatural enhancements to get him his body. And I want to be clear here, I'm not just vilifying anyone who uses steroids or anything to help them achieve their fitness goals. I think that's totally within their own right as a personal choice that they make. Yes, of course, it's dangerous, but it's their choice. And who am I to stop them from doing that? If they get medical supervision, of course, that's going to help. The problem that I have here, as well as many other people, is that he's selling a lie. He's blatantly lying, saying that what I have achieved is naturally achievable if you just follow my nine ancestral tenets. None of which contributed to the HGH that he was boofing up as here to get him these incredible results. Like, none of that is what he is selling. He's not selling any of these steroids. He's selling hopium. If you want to be a top king, if you want unlimited access to cars, money, and if you want to find your queen, then you have to fuel your efforts with ancestral supplements, liver, beef organs, and bone marrow with breakfast, lunch, and dinner because liver is king. And you already know with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, always going to have a whole feast protein shake. This is a clip from More Plates, More Dates who made an amazing breakdown on this entire situation that I highly recommend. I'm going to put a link to it in the description. But I wanted to show you one of his advertisements for some of his brands here. And I just feel like this is super because he's making it sound like these supplements, you know, are really helpful to getting you jacked like me, the liver king, whose nipples could probably shoot milk 50 yards away with how big my pecs are. Like he's making it seem like he got huge from these things and now he's revealing these secrets and selling them to you so you can get big and strong like him but that's not really the whole story clearly it seems like he had a lot of help from a old human growth hormone over here it's not really the supplements he's selling that work for him it's the goddamn HGH and everything else that he was taking. So it just seems like he's selling all of these supplements knowing full well they're not exactly necessary and it seems like it's done just to squeeze a couple extra dollars out of his tier. But I don't think everything he's done or said is harmful. Of course all of the raw meat eating is pretty dangerous. Like that's not optimal. That's not good advice to just go out there and eat raw meat. Like you should, especially not raw testicles. 
I don't think anyone should be listening to the Liver King and start panicking like, holy, I want to get huge biceps and a bulging turtle shell six pack. I'm going to go run outside right now and skin a squirrel and eat the balls off of it raw. Like, none of that I think is good advice, of course. And of course, none of his like primal stuff really matters. Like your mindset of being a primal man is not going to all of a sudden make you jacked or anything. But he does give just like wholesome life advice, which I suppose could be motivational or inspirational to some people that need to hear those things about like having a more positive frame of mind and a positive approach to living life and making time for yourself and having fun which is all very cliche and not exactly profound stuff but he does sprinkle those things in which is just generally decent advice like making sure you're taking care of your mentality first and foremost and not just for gains but for the sake of just better overall living like all of that advice i think is fine it's more so when he gets into this stuff where he's, of course, blatantly hiding that he does have a past of using steroids and is very much still on those uh, unnatural boosters and pretending he's not. All of that is a big problem and all of the stuff he seems to be selling, of course, isn't necessary and it's not like the key to getting big in the first place. Maybe it helps some people, but it's not exactly as he's advertising it. Now, when it's all said and done, I'm sure there's a lot of people and a lot of his fans that probably don't care and probably always knew that he was on gear, and they'll probably still follow the ancestral way of living he preaches because maybe they like it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the uh, ancestral he talked about, like sleeping on a goddamn block of wood or being afraid of Wi-Fi signals in the house and, and like that. I think that's all just super silly stuff. He became huge in the first place because of his over-the-top raw meat eating and his wild physique. People wanted to look like him because he looks like an absolutely jacked Radagast the Brown from Lord of the Rings. So people bought into his program under the that if they follow this, follow the ancestral tenets, maybe buy from his other companies that all filter from the Liver King overall brand, maybe they too could look like him. But now that this information has come to light, it's clear that what he has achieved with his own body is only replicatable if you also start cycling that kind of juice. And not from following his program or taking his bone marrow supplements. Now, he has had somewhat of a response to this information coming out, but it's a pretty confusing one. According to the Daily Beast, his response was, In a weird way, I'm grateful for the recent events that have shed light on this complicated topic. He then followed it up by uh, humbly requesting that podcasts have him on to discuss his lifestyle. And then says, I model, teach, and preach a simple, elegant solution called ancestral living, the nine ancestral tenets, so our people no longer have to suffer, suffer so we can collectively express our highest and most dominant form. This is my fight. So it really doesn't say much of anything, just drops a nothing burger on the plate, and that meat is raw. Like, there's, n there's nothing here. He doesn't really give any information. It seems like he once again wants to squeeze clout out of this situation by openly asking to go on podcasts, which he's made a habit out of. He's been on more podcasts than anyone I've ever seen in my life. Any podcast you can think of off the top of your head, like maybe your local college campus podcast, he's probably been on it. Like he has been on everything because he openly says, anytime people are talking about me, it's a good thing. Whether it's negative or positive, like there was a whole conspiracy about him potentially having ab implants. He says, you know what, that's great too, if people are talking about me. So he wants as much attention as possible, always has, and even in this situation here, is looking to capitalize off it for the sake of publicity. So I guess maybe when he does go on his next podcast, we'll have more information on his side of things. But as of right now, we don't have a whole lot from him to go off of. But we do have a lot of evidence that I do think is reputable. I don't see a lot of wiggle room for that being fake. I trust the source. I think More Plates, More Dates is very reliable when it comes to information like this, and he delivers a very in-depth look at all of it. Again, I can't recommend his video enough if you're interested in this topic. So yeah, I just wanted to go over this because I've talked about Liver King quite a bit. And I will say, while I don't, while More Plates, More Dates has convinced me Liver King doesn't have ab implants, I full-heartedly believe he has had ab etching, at the very least, ab etching done. It makes no sense to me how he's able to have such a defined six-pack bulging, bursting from his skin, even while sitting down. That doesn't make sense. It looks like the top of a grill. 
at all times. It looks like it's made out of actual steel. Like, there is just no way. And of course, now it seems like he's been on quite a bit of juice for a while now. But even with that, there's still just no way those abs would work that way. It just makes no sense. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about this topic a little bit. And uh, that's about it. See ya. YouTuber apology videos are always highly entertaining. But I've got something especially wacky for you today. It's not an apology. This is a YouTube response video from the head of a crypto company that recently found itself in some hot water after the iShow Speed stream from earlier this week. For those that don't know, iShow Speed is a huge YouTuber who did an entire stream earlier this week dedicated to shilling for a very shady crypto company called Paradox Metaverse. Since then, Speed has apologized, called it a big mistake, and wants to move on and learn from the experience. And I'm not here to tell you how, how to feel about all of that. That's up to you. I'm not Speed's PR manager or anything, and I'm not really here to talk about Speed. I'm here to talk about that company because the head of it made a response to all of this and he just pooped out the I've ever seen in my life. It is terrible. This grown man sat down to whine and cry about all of the people calling it a scam just being trolls and bots. He blamed the entire thing on like a cyber attack from bots trying to bring down his company. Or if they weren't bots, they were trolls that were influenced by the bots calling it L scam. And then he provides no evidence to prove that it's not a scam and instead just says, if we were a scam, why are we still here? We wouldn't be here if it was still a scam. If this was a rug pull, why hasn't it been rugged yet? He then issues a galaxy brain challenge to everyone to find a part in that stream where he said it was a scam, where he admitted it was a scam. And since you can't find a spot where he said it's all a scam, then it can't be a scam, obviously. Checkmate. I'm not even kidding. This this is actually points that he's making in his response video. It is so... Where's their response video, though? I don't see that anywhere on here. That'd also be a really bad idea for them to post that publicly. Before we into the video, we had an average 40,000 viewers. That's his speed. Wise, we had around five to 10,000 comments. We had two huge spikes. The first one being when we introduced fake Ronaldo into the stream. Three what does that have to do with anything? He's going to make the claim that these two spikes... Where'd they go? He's going to make the claim that these two spikes were when bots came in to say L scam. But what he fails to realize is the reason there's these spikes is because more people decided to type L scam when they realized how shady and dog this whole thing was. It's not bots. These, these clowns have been very vocal about it being bots that were saying scam nobody else everyone else loved it like the actual people with a pulse they loved it everyone saying that it was a scam is a bot they can't wrap their head around no people just realized it was a scam we had two huge so that's spots. why he's showing that because he's going to make that we claim are just as much of a fan of aisha speak no comments suggesting that we are a scam it was just w's in the chat all the way around what happened next that's just because of speed again the reason there are w's in the chat is because it was a speed stream and everyone spams W's in the chat for speed. But the more that you went on about Paradox Metaverse, the more obvious it became that this is all just shilling for a dog crypto scam. So then people started saying, L scam. You started making calls to action for Paradox Metaverse to go follow the Twitter account, the playing the game. So it made people more of it and then starting to type more for it. It's caught us all by surprise. This is when the first cyber attack happens. It's this not a cyber attack. Holy, attack. this guy's talking like Jack Bauer at CTU. After the full attack, all the comments went down, as you can see here. Guys, this is very unusual. It's no. clear to see that he was botted. You know what else would cause a spike like this? Let's say Speed went on stream, everything's normal like this, and then he, he beat a man to f in cold blood. There would be this huge spike then too. And it wouldn't be bots, it would people say, holy, what the L speed? Murder? Like, it'd, it'd have a spike then, too. The reason the spike happened is because you had more egregious calls to action, like following the Twitter, so people started putting out that it is a scam and this is shady. It's clear to see that he was botted. No, <laughs> Christ. That anybody that was watching that live stream, they started falling for it. They started thinking, okay, somebody knows we don't. So started pushing out the narrative that this, this is, is so even as like a paradox buyer, like the community for paradox meta, you have to see this and you have to be having your red flags go off. Like this has to trigger your own red flags to see that your CEO is so weak and so insecure 
that he's writing these things off as bots in pure delusion and cope. Calling it an attack. Like, in the crypto space, you have to be smarter than that. Like, you would know the bare minimum about how it works. What he should have done is just say, the, the speed wasn't ready for it, they didn't see the vision, so they all thought it was a scam. And you know what? We missed the mark. Now they all think we're a scam. But we're not. But he's not doing that. Instead, he's placating. He's putting this on some invisible enemy that doesn't exist. It's not bots. Now he just looks really weak to even his own community. He looks so insecure. Actually decided, you know what? This is actually funny. Let's troll the person we look up to the most that we tune into every single day. Ah, uh, the guilt trip. Entertains us for okay. fucks or anything in return. Guys, please listen very carefully. It's very important. Crypto exchange is worth $40 billion. It has sent us a picture saying, why if I should see comment saying scam coin? $40 billion. We spent $10 million on this project and every single person in the comment is saying scam coin because we are getting bought here. Please do something, we're gonna Guys, what you have just heard is the aftermath of being completely botted. Scam, scam, Ugh. scam. Ten million dollars of my hard-earned money that I've worked so hard for. What, like, what is that even supposed to prove? You still believing it's bots, refusing to accept the reality of things that people see through this garbage. Like, th this doesn't prove anything on your innocence. It doesn't. All this proves, and if you played it longer, is that you asked Speed to shut it down, he, you asked if he could disable the chat. So you're taking away the people's voice. Which makes you look bad and goes against your uh, stances on things. Like, if you played it further. Like, it doesn't prove anything anyway, even if you take out that part. It is not evidence. It's nothing. It's literally nothing. Into this project, into this business. And the fact that I'm going to lose it all because everybody is labeling it a scam. Yeah, well, at least you still have your stupid university. Like, you have plenty of other scams that you can hustle on too, man. Like, you don't need your sob story. Ten million to you is nothing. You made a whole video with money kicks showing off your rented car collection. Like, you have plenty of money. Like, you are you got a ton of other ventures that I'm sure you can pull from. At no point did anyone say we are going to scam anyone. Anyone with half a brain cell can see this with their own eyes. Yeah, anyone with half a brain cell can see that just by looking at our product real quick stuff. and seeing all seven of our companies that promise things like $500 a day and 10 to 100x returns. Oh, and also the same guy who can't follow through on his bet, where you bet that the Paradox meta will open to at least like 20 or 30, and if it doesn't, you're changing your name to CoffeeZilla. It opened to 9 cents, and you didn't change your name to CoffeeZilla. But here, let's take a peek at the game that you were so proud of. Man, that really does look like that is the future and has a lot of work put into it. Using so many, so many standard packages in the, the, what is this, the Unreal Store? I can't remember. Yeah, wow, this really does look like a lot going on here. that could absolutely be thrown together in a matter of and a game that i'm sure we've probably played before on steam indie new release night when we go through games they're called flips there's nothing here that screams whole team project we're in it for the long haul with this project and what was the label i show speed promotes those scam yep guys he did listen to the audio yourself go over it again and again mention to us once when we said we are going to scam people. That's such a non-point. <laughs> we never said it on that stream, so it can't be true. Prove that we said it's going to be a scam. Do it. Where did I say it's a scam? Anywhere during that stream. Is the person you want to label a scam, or is it that you <clears throat> just want to ice speed with a scam? This is cancel culture at its finest. Oh, yes. hitting all the buzzwords, all, all the boo-hoos, the cancel culture. Don't launch a shady crypto. It's that simple. Your crypto, your paradox meta has like seven components, all of which make no sense and are literally just actual dog. He was not getting done. Everything that was getting done in front of your eyes, no one had an issue with up until we got spammed. That's actually not true. The smashing, like, you're already wrong. The smashing of the PlayStation 5's gotten a huge influx of L speeds. Chat immediately turned against him with the smashing of the PlayStation 5's. So, I mean, you're just not even right there either. It wasn't just L scam, it was L speed for smashing PlayStation 5's.
there was no evidence, there was no substance. If we was a scam, why would we still be here? God, these are such non-points. If we were a scam, we'd be in jail right now. We wouldn't even be allowed here right now if we were a scam. How is this fair? Here's a video. We're gonna play the video. This video Ooh, is in is it mine? crying every single day, in, sh in tears every single day, but he still manages to continue with his live stream just to please his fans. And you guys took it upon yourselves to what? think it's funny to just troll people. You guys don't understand the, the stuff that comes after this trolling. On camera, everyone has to smile. Nobody can show other people their fears. Off camera, could you imagine what he's going through? Because we do. We know exactly what's going on. You're not his friend. He already threw you to the wolves. Why are you still his... Speed, like, uh, like straight up said, yeah, this was a mistake. Like, he at the very least has moved on and said, yep, that was bad. Yeah, that was bad. And yet here you are like, oh, we are there. We are holding him in our laps as he is crying profusely, uncontrollably because of what you guys have done to him. He is not ready for what the world is accusing him of. And he doesn't know how to respond. So I'm taking it upon myself to respond on his behalf. <laughs> oh, this is so sad now. You staked the rug pull on a 17-year-old's it didn't pan out. He has now wiped this with your whole company and you are still here begging for that to accept you by pretending like things are like close between you two. Yikes, that's Jesus Christ, man. Have some shame. Please stop this, hate. It takes very little to just be nice. Uh, rather than... Calling out a scam isn't just needless cancel culture hate. That's just not what it is. This is so sad. This is so sad. This is a grown man. This is a very, very wealthy grown man. You can see, us as founders, we do not even have access to our own tokens. I can, I literally don't think there's enough numbers that exist to show how many claims have been made exactly like that, only for them to get everyone that bought in. That is the number one claim that every crypto makes. No, founders are fully out there, very transparent. They don't they don't even hold any. And they couldn't even get in there if they wanted to. In fact, we have protocols in place to prevent that from happening. And then bang, rug pull. Every single time. Like clockwork. Literally every single time. Still my favorite to this day, there was a Twitter account called On, which was a Twitter account dedicated to showcasing and people of pulls in the crypto space. And then eventually they rugged their own community. So they had their own coin as well. And eventually I was like, yep, we're taking. So they made off with millions and they made a post saying, you guys should stop blindly trusting people like this. And still, still people buy into it like that. It's crazy. That is a nothing claim. Everything he has said so far is actually nothing. He's provided no evidence to prove that it's not a scam. He has provided nothing other than trying to guilt people and saying that it's all just bad faith trolling. I will make sure. See you guys on the moon. Nice. That's so huge. <laughs> that was awful. Holy. That was a big one. What else? And how to say absolutely nothing. Nah, part two might clear up everything. Even burning their founders' tokens, they can't even cash out for a whole year. That shows confidence in the project being 10,000, 100,000% legit. Oh, me. I hope that's a bot. I hope that's not a real person. Yikes. Oh, yikes. The comments aren't really on his side either. I really do wonder what the Paradox community thinks of a move like this. But it, I, I'm i not going into their Discord to find out. Usually it's just a lot of people convincing themselves of absolute nonsense in order to believe that they can make money off of it. And then when it doesn't happen, they just pretend like oh, they just got fooled by someone who was just too smart. Even though the writing was on the wall right in front of their face the entire time. It, everything he said is things thousands of scams in the space have said before him. He just copied their playbook. You all know how much I love awful YouTuber apology videos, but today I've got truly special to show you. This is the magnum opus of saying I'm sorry. It doesn't come from a YouTuber either. This comes from a basketball player, and he completely redefined the apology video meta. He made an entire apology. 
I'm talking about Draymond Green. Now, I don't know how many of you are some red-blooded American, brewski, boofing, patriotic sports fans, but I'm going to break down the situation for those of you that aren't and don't know what I'm referring to. Draymond Green is a professional basketball player, plays for the... And recently, he was filmed in practice punching his teammate after an argument. I can't show the video because YouTube will probably age-restrict it for shocking and disturbing content, which it's not. So I'll just paint the picture with words here. So Draymond Green and Jordan Poole are at practice, and then some words get exchanged between the two. I can't read their lips, and the quality looks like it's straight out of 2001 off of a goddamn Motorola Razor, so the quality's abysmal. Don't know what they said to each other, but they were some not nice words being exchanged. Perhaps Jordan Poole hit him with a Spongebob reference that he didn't appreciate, like, Hey pal, you just blow in from stupid town. Then Draymond Green gets up in his face. Jordan Poole pushes him off, and in response to that, Draymond Green cranks a mean one and lets a go-go gadget extendo knuckle sandwich fly, absolutely blasting Jordan Poole. I don't think it was a full-blown knockout, but Jordan Poole did hit the ground hard. Like, he went down harder than the UPS delivery driver throwing my packages at the door. But this is where this fight started and stopped. The team separated the two of them, and the video was leaked to TMZ. And this became a huge deal in the entire sports world. Draymond Green did issue an apology publicly, saying he was sorry for the whole situation and how he was by it. But clearly he wasn't enough because he decided to shamelessly make a about this whole situation as well. The man made a full-blown goddamn Michael Moore style on his punch of his teammate. It's so weird and goofy. I'm going to show that to you now, at least bits and, bits and pieces of it. But I also want to let you all know, if you're not familiar with Draymond Green, the guy has a reputation for being a bit of a douchebag. If you just type in Draymond Green hitting players in this, you can watch full compilations of how many times he's kicked other basketball players in their ball sack. He's made a habit out of it. There's one player in particular, Steven Adams. I believe he's kicked him in his jewels three times. Two times in one game, if I remember it correctly. So he's got a reputation for being a bit of a dirty player and a bit of a... So this was just a nice cherry on top of that already pretty bad reputation. On October 5th, Draymond Green and teammate Jordan Poole got into a verbal altercation during practice. The incident ended with Draymond punching Poole in the face. Yeah, they pulled out all the stops for this one, all the bells and whistles. They got a professional voiceover here, making it sound very official, professional. And uh, you would think most people in general would want to move on from a controversy like this. Just, you know, apologize, put your head down and ignore it. So that way we'll hopefully go away faster. But for some reason, Draymond and the whole team that put this piece together really like to roll around in the drama of this, making it a spectacle. I don't know what they thought was a good idea about this, making it to explain the punch. It's totally unnecessary. I think everyone understands what happened here. Draymond got upset and punched his teammate. It's very simple. It's like the simplest story ever told. Yet they're making it seem like a very complex issue with very many moving parts to it that we don't fully grasp, thus needed to explain it to our little idiot brains here. It, it, it makes no sense to me. They're just here trying to squeeze as much milk from this controversy as possible, just grabbing it by the tit to get as much juice from the squeeze as they can. I think you're initially upset, you know, uh, pissed off, which, which, is how you, which is why you have the reaction you have. You don't say. The reason you punch people is because you're upset and pissed off? <laughs> Truly groundbreaking revelations here. My third eye is open. My mind is being expanded. Just please slow down here, Socrates. We're tackling some very profound and deep things now. <laughs> You're telling me there's a correlation between being upset and punching someone? No, that, no, no, what? Part of the process of why did this happen and walking yourself through why, um, the different things that can get you to why uh, what took place actually took place. It's not that deep. I wasn't even there and I could tell you why this happened. Because he hurt your feelings and you lashed out. You had a little temper tantrum and punched him. It's not a confusing situation that needs like a deep explanation. The only question I'd be asking is why didn't you aim for his sack like you normally do? Now that you process what just happened, now you've processed the why. Now how do you feel and what do you feel about it? What in the f are you even saying? Jesus Christ, you punched your teammate. 
That's it. I don't think after the punch you immediately went into a sensory deprivation tank to meditate on it and really dig deep into the weeds and figure out, well, why did this happen and, and how am I feeling about it? Like, what, did you go immediately and see a psychiatrist? Or, like, what, what are you going on about here? <laughs> Jesus. Imagine Jordan Poole. You get punched and the guy who punched you makes it about it. You already know Jordan Poole and the rest of the team are laughing at Draymond Green for this one. And rightfully so. The man is the protagonist of premium cringe right now. Uh, so you get at a time, you know, you give it some time to allow people to throw their opinion out. Which, quite frankly, I don't care about people's opinion. Yeah, this really seems like someone who doesn't care about people's opinion. He cares so little about your opinion that he made an entire whining about the situation. That's how little of a he gives about what you think about him. Now, please, uh, shed some tears for this forgiveness he's made. I don't spend much time, I don't read, really read many tweets at all. And so I was just at home chilling with my children. If you want me to be honest with you, I still don't know how much the world may think it blew up. Sparked by the leak of the video, the incident did blow up. The, oh, I wasn't even paying attention. I didn't think it was a big deal. I was at home with my family being a loving father. And in fact, I'm one of the best fathers on the planet. I'm not a bad guy. I, in fact, I was just so preoccupied being the best dad of all time that I didn't even stop to notice that people were upset at me for a video that was taken. Or, I, you know, I don't even know if it was a big deal at all. I apologize to, to his family. For me, that is the task at hand to, to rebuild um, trust in our locker room. I felt as a man, I felt as a leader, that I would do everything that I can to make this right. Or That's a clip from his like public apology when this first started blowing up, and I actually thought it was fine. He said, I'm sorry to Jordan, his family, his team, and then explained how he's going to try and make things right and make things better and get trust back in the locker room. And then a week later, he makes this absolutely insane documentary about the punch. So clearly went awry there. The first response he had, I think, was okay. He's just like, you know what, I up. It, it is what it is, and I'm sorry. And now he goes <laughs> full Hollywood here, sniffing his own farts and makes it surrounding this punch. It's on me to make sure we're headed that way. I've heard it. You know, you know what it is. I know what it is. It's team to move forward, put it behind us. It helps. Allows you to start the process. And get back to business. That's where I go from here. That's where we go from here. Gotta love how this video is supposed to be like an explanation for why it happened and a little surrounding it, but it doesn't even do that. It doesn't do the bare minimum. He just says like, well, why did it happen? And it's the process of understanding why it happened. But never even says why it happened. He never even explains why he did it. I mean, everyone knows why he punched him. Like, we all get it. But this whole thing was built around the idea of, well, here's his chance to defend himself and give his side of, you know, what happened here and how regretful he is. But it doesn't even do that. But you want to know the best part of this? It says nothing. It doesn't even make a point. It's just like, hey, here's Draymond Green. He punched this guy. And here's him moderately reflecting on it. And then he goes back to practice and he says it's time to get back to work. And he hopes he could lead the team better now. That's it. That's the whole... Like, it, it, it has no purpose whatsoever. It, it, it's mind-blowing that this got made. But regardless, that's pretty much where it ends. It's, it's very silly. And I just wanted to talk about it because I think it's a, a wild setup. Just here making it about your outburst punching your teammate is such a bold move. And uh, yeah, that's about it.